country of origin, and of course morally, nor should they. And yet, on the other hand, we have ASIO making a separate determination. ASIO acting with total impunity, totally uh, without transparency, totally without any you know, representation at all, with no oversight from any democratic body, saying that these individuals are security threats. And the Australian government then uses that determination to say that we will not release these innocent asylum seekers into the Australian community. The result, of course, is that these asylum seekers are left effectively to rot. That there is no end in sight for these refugees. They can be kept in detention for the rest of their lives, behind razor wire, with no hope of ever seeing the other side of the fence. That is why, that is the why this protest has been called today. To call shame on the Australian government for these barbaric and racist policies towards refugees. Shame. Well, we've got a whole range of speakers here today, uh, from the Greens, uh, from Victoria's Trades Hall Council, uh, from the Tamil community as well, as well from the Refugee Action Collective. Uh, we might start with Kathy Oak, I think she's just arrived, uh, speaking on behalf of the Greens. If you don't mind going first. You're happy to go first, sure. Instead of the Greens coming first, we're right here from Arkelia from Victorian Trades Hall Council. So let's give her a round of applause. Thanks. Um, hello everyone. Thanks very much for having me. Um, I'm here on behalf of Victorian Trades Hall Council. Um, I hope, you know, I think we're all going to be talking about similar issues and similar uh, things today because it is um, all quite obvious, in my opinion. Um, the thing that I've been struck with recently um, in you know, a lot of the media that we've finally got on this issue is that this really isn't a new issue. Um, refugee activists, legal advocates, um, so many in the community have been raising concerns about this particular policy with the federal parliament, with the ALP for so long. And it's really, I think, um, a shame on our representative democracy that it's taken a young family um, being imprisoned and taken out of the community for something to be you know, done about this and for the national media to finally pay attention to what the real ramifications um, of this uh, particular policy on ASIO assessment are. Um, so that's the first thing that I wanted to say, that this is not a new issue and that it's shameful that it's taken um, Ranveni and her two boys being taken up to the Woods for this to finally get um, actual media coverage. Um, the other thing that I wanted to say was um, I attended the Australian Council of Trade Unions Congress last week um, and there was some really good amendments made to the refugee policy addressing this, this issue of indefinite detention as a result of negative ASIO uh, assessments. So I thought that I would um, read you these policies. They are just policies, but I think it's really significant that um, they were passed unanimously at uh, ACTU Congress. So the usual suspects who um, you know, bring up issues of Australian security being more important than anything else, they weren't heard. So this, this, these changes were passed unanimously um, by unions around the country. Um, so I'll just read the first. Congress opposes with concern the ongoing and indefinite detention of large number of asylum seekers and refugees, including children. This approach is inconsistent with the practice of most receiving countries, with Australia one of the small group of nations to use mandatory detention. Health, identity and security check processes can and should be undertaken without mandatory detention, as happens in most other recipient nations. In the immediate term, priority should be given to identifying any risks and moving asylum seekers for whom no risk is identified out of detention as quickly as possible and placed in the community while waiting for a decision. So that's obviously about mandatory detention. Um, on the specific ASIO issue and just on what that means for individuals who face um, indefinite detention, um, Congress notes that current procedures surrounding ASIO security assessments are not transparent and can lead to indefinite detention despite individuals having been granted refugee status. So I just wanted to let everyone here know today that um, comrades in the union movement stand alongside you in condemning um, firstly mandatory detention itself and the impact that that has on people's lives um, and livelihoods and their mental health as well. 
um, and obviously prioritising community-based approaches and community detention rather than um, mandatory detention. Um, but again, strongly on this issue, on why Rangini is now relocated uh, to Villa Wood and, and facing indefinite detention with their two young boys. Um, and, and particularly, you know, those two young boys and a young mother, you know, being alongside people who are also facing indefinite detention, um, who are, you know, attempting to take their lives. So this is all about not only the fact that they're facing a life in detention, but also that um, what it means for someone's health to think that they're going to spend their life in detention. You know, that's just as bad, and no wonder, you know, so many of these um, particular refugees are on suicide watch. So that's, that's shameful. Um, I finally wanted to just talk quickly about procedural fairness, because I think, um, aside from the, you know, what's happened around Jenny and her boys, um, this is actually about a really simple issue, which is about procedural fairness in Australia. Um, and it's something that our entire legal system is based on. Um, so due process, transparency, the right of appeal. For some reason we've got this, um, you know, obscene situation where individuals who are being recognised as refugees, um, because it's ASIO, because it's this kind of, you know, special area of the law that um, is above everything else apparently, that, um, that there is no access to appeal, there's no access to find out the information that's being held against you. There's no access to part of the decision. Um, and I just think that goes against all notions of procedural fairness and natural justice. Um, and anyone in our federal parliament or is involved in politics um, who holds themselves out to be committed to procedural fairness um, and natural justice um, has no excuse but to, but to do something about this um, terrible situation. So I support everyone here today in Victoria Trade Hall Council supports um, calling in for a change and an end to this um, you know, bizarre and, and inhumane policy that leaves people um, facing or thinking that they're going to be facing a life with indefinite detention. Thank you, comrades. Right, let's get some chants going. So, A-S-I-O, definite detention has got to go. 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 I think those links with Kili are true between the fact that refugees are being persecuted by ASIO and the fact that refugees are being persecuted more broadly by the Australian government through the entire regime of managed detention are very, very important. Of course, refugees who are the victims of neg negative uh, security assessments from ASIO are indefinitely in prison. They face a potential life behind bars. But at the same time, that is true of all refugees. Refugees who come to Australia uh, seeking uh, seeking help and seeking protection are fucked up indefinitely. There is no end date to their detention. They are never told when they will get out of uh, their imprisonment. They are never told when they'll see the other side of the fence. That's why I think it's so important that we raise our voices against managed detention and against ASIO's treatment of refugees because the two, uh, the two sort of types of persecution are so inextricably linked. I would like to move on to our, our second speaker now, um, and we might call on Patty Oak, uh, who's speaking on.